Thank you very much, Ivor. Thank you. Just want to say, start. It's a real privilege to be invited to speak at TEDx here in Leeds, and uh, and uh, just yeah, there you go. It's a real privilege for me to be here. I've worked with young people for, uh, well, since I was a young person, about 20 years ago, I guess. And I recently wrote this book uh, called How to Be Sick at School. That's sick as in, as in good in it, not sick as in the... Anyway, there we go. So that, that's pretty much been my life, working with young people. And uh, it's kind of consumed most of, of what I've done over the last uh, 20 years or so. I found this quote from a newspaper. For years, the organized gangs of young people who infest the neighborhood have been getting worse and worse. It is no exaggeration to say that the people of, communi of the community go in fear of their lives. An explanation you see quite, co quite common in tabloid newspapers. This was written in 1898, and uh, you can see it's from the uh, Illustrated Police News in 1898. So maybe things haven't changed a little bit. But of course, what happened last year was a big shock to most of us. In August 2011, there was riots and disturbances in, in some of the major cities here in the UK that caused um, millions of pounds, uh, hundreds of million pounds worth of damage, and uh, over 1,500 uh, 1, people, I believe, have been convicted of these offences. And what I'm about to say is that I do not uh, justify what's happened in any way. I think what happened was terrible, and if people commit a crime, certainly they should be punished for it. But I just want to explain that a little bit more. Even here in Leeds, um, there wasn't any major disturbances. There was someone shot that weekend in Leeds, uh, but there wasn't major disturbances. And that basically is down to uh, two or three guys that I met recently who are, in fact, uh, youth and community workers in Leeds who spent their time on the streets talking to the young people in some of the key areas of Leeds and actually, I believe, prevented Leeds riots. So Leeds was that close to being on the riot list in August. And blessed are the Leeds peacemakers, not blessed are the cheesemakers, as they say on Life of Brian. Uh, but I believe that we were that close, and so it is important for us as a city to look at it as well. David Cameron uh, came out of his meeting from Cobra, uh, and he basically said that it was criminality. The riots were criminality, pure and simple criminality. Interesting thing, and of course, something that a, he that, that a prime minister would say, however, that, what that does is it pushes us away. It means it's about them, it's not about us. It's someone else has done it, it's not about us. John Pitts, the criminology professor, when he was interviewed, he said that riots are actually quite complex and they're not just thuggery. So actually, they're not just pure criminality. There's something behind them, they're complex. And so even Twitter, on my Twitter stream during, during the riots last year, my Twitter stream is fairly positive, fairly liberal, quite a nice place to be most of the time. But all of a sudden, even the Twitter stream, the stream turned into something that I'd never experienced before. I started asking some questions about why are these riots happening? And basically I was just, tw tweets were sent to me which is basically about hang them, hang them up by their diddly bits, chop their hands off, throw away the key. And Twitter went into this real kind of right-wing extremism just for a few days and I was really shocked by the whole thing. But I think it's important that we do genuinely look at it. So why did people riot? The London School of Economics, the Home Office and The Guardian have done significant research on this and I will put some more of that stuff available for you maybe on my website where you can look at that. There's lots of stuff out there. But here's, let me just dispel a couple of myths to start with. And that is, they weren't about gangs. Uh, lots of people in the government came out and said it was gang related. Only 7% of those that were arrested had any affiliation to a gang whatsoever. And, and most gang activities were actually ceased for that weekend, would you believe it or not? There was lots of truces made that weekend. They weren't about race. They were possibly about tuition fees. That certainly raised the tension with young people. And certainly uh, the educational maintenance allowance, or the EMA, the scrapping of EMA, has had a massive effect on 16 to 19 year olds in, in, in our nation. But actually, the research comes out that a lot of it was anger at authority. There was a lot of anger at the police. Uh, the police, uh, particularly around the stop and search policies that have been uh, used in many inner cities, a lot of anger against the police, uh, anger against MPs and the expenses scandal certainly didn't help that way, encouraging young people to believe in people that are leading the country. And of course, as has always already been mentioned, the issues around bankers and the recession and the credit crunch certainly didn't help. But young people having a go at uh, people in authority was never really, a bit, not really a big surprise. That's kind of in their job description. I'm sure that you probably did that when you were a teenager too. But what else caused these riots? What were the other factors? Well, simply, it was about fun. 
fun and hedonism was an important part. If you're a young person and something's kicking off, if something is happening on 20, if it's on 24 hour TV and something is going round a loop and it looks quite exciting, then a lot of people just get involved. It was literally like, I'm just gonna get involved. That looks interesting. And lots of people got on the tube and, and they traveled to certain areas to try and see what all the fun was about. And that's often what happened and the stories of people being arrested that were just really on the way back from work and stuff like that and got involved in stuff. And you know, that's one of the reasons. The other one is free stuff. And I think it's quite important as when you look at riots to actually separate a riot from looting. Because I think they're two separate issues. That a riot is all, a riot is all about, um, is, is, is all about you know, anger and stuff like that. Whereas looting, of course, is opportunism. Oh, there's no consequences. I can go in here, I can do that, no problem at all. And I can, and I can go for it. Actually, um, blackberries, blackberries. It's okay, it's not a good joke. Um, we're actually uh, part to, partly to blame, you could say. Blackberries used to be an executive phone, now that they're almost exclusively for teenagers, and BBM is an anonymous way of communicating, pretty anonymous, and most teenagers write in a language that we'd have no idea what they were saying. But a lot of that has, has certainly fueled some, some, of, some of the issues. But for me, the elephant in the room is that possibly consumerism has had a bigger effect than we have ever thought it would do. Consumerism, if you like, is the UK's new religion. Because what, what, what are we actually teaching young people? And I teach young people on a, on a daily basis and I see loads of them, as well as going into businesses, I go into schools all the time and I'm working with young people. And what, what, are, what do we see? What has been taught? Well, actually, we need to be very careful what we teach young people. And I think that maybe, not in the great schools and stuff that I work in, but it may be in some areas of society, what we're teaching young people is what is real success. What we've implied to them is that real success is getting a car of your choice, a wonderful car, of getting a 50-inch plasma TV and having as much money as you want. That is often what we've taught, and of course that is absolute rubbish. We need to be very, very careful what we teach young people about success. We need to teach them about their philosophy, their ethos, their values, what, is, what are they on the earth for? What is their purpose? We need to be very careful, and I think some of that was shown in the riots. Even in Leeds, we're trying to become a child-friendly city here in Leeds. And we cannot become a child-friendly city if we do not learn to love young people. That as someone who's worked with young people for so long, I tell you, we're, we're, we're in quite a serious situation. We're going to have to learn to encourage young people. We're going to have to learn to love them and like them even when, when they're not very likable. Because if not, we're going to write off a whole generation and you saw a little taste of that in the summer with the riots. We need to be very careful, we don't write off. Even Reginald D. Hunter, the American comedian, said on a, on a chat show recently, he said, I'm not sure about you, but in the UK, but it appears to me that you don't like children unless they've gone missing. I found that really shocking. You don't like children in the UK unless they've gone missing. That is a little stone in your shoe that I'm gonna leave with you today. It's important for us to love young people, to like them and encourage them. And maybe uh, if we do that, we won't have any more riots. This is my daughter. I have, my, I have twin daughters, Rhea and Lauren. They're just turning teenagers in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time, my twin daughters are turning teenagers. And they used to fit into that baby grow. I loved them when they fitted into that baby grow. And I still love them now as they're, as they're approaching to be teenagers. And I think that's exactly how we should look at young people as a society. So maybe if we love them, we won't have riots at all. Thanks for listening. Thank you.